All right, friends, welcome back. We've completed the routing and we came across a challenge. How do we get the selected housing location data to be available in the details component? We're going to solve this with a concept called a service. Now a service has many different functions or purposes and we get to decide which of these directions we'll take in our application. One way a service can be used is to function as the way to interact with the data. For example, instead of each component having a copy of the housing location data, we can create a service that is responsible for retrieving the data from the data source, providing the helpful utility functions that allow us to access the data, and in some cases, having functions that allow us to persist data to a data source. So let's start by creating a service using the Angular CLI. And by the way, have you noticed how helpful the Angular CLI is? Yeah, I'm just saying, it's pretty cool. So from the command line in your project, enter the following, N-G-G-S housing. In this case, the S is an abbreviation for service and we're naming it housing. In the IDE, open housing.service.ts. A service is a TypeScript class in Angular. The injectable decorator tells Angular that we can use this class in the dependency injection system, meaning that other parts of the application can request an instance of the service. The provided in property of the injectable decorator metadata tells Angular where in the application this service can be injected. Now, root means that it can be used throughout the application. We need to move the data from the home component to the service. In housing.service.ts, let's import the housing location interface from dot forward slash housing location. Next, add a protected property to the housing service class called housing location list and make that of type housing location array. For now, assign housing location list an empty array. We need to populate the array with data. Now we'll copy the data from the home component. So in home component.ts, copy the contents of the housing location array and paste it into the housing location list array in housing.service.ts. Back in housing.service.ts, we're going to add two methods to the service. First, Add a method named get all housing locations that takes no parameters but returns a housing location array. We'll use this method to return the list of housing locations to the caller. In the body of the function, return this dot housing location list. Now, wherever we inject this service, we can request the housing location list. We also don't have to worry about duplicated data because the service will now be the source of truth. The next method we need to add is get housing location by ID, which accepts a parameter called ID of type number and it returns the union type of housing location or undefined. We're using the TypeScript union type here because the call of this function could pass in an ID that doesn't match any housing location. In the body of the function, we'll search the array. Here's how. This dot housing location list dot find and to the find function, we'll pass in an arrow function as a parameter. The arrow function has a parameter of housing location, and the logic is this one-liner, housing location dot ID triple equals ID. The find function will return the first match in the array, so we don't have to worry about any unnecessary iterations here. Now, be sure to save your progress. We're gonna update a few more files to use our fancy new service. The first component we'll update to use the new housing service is home.component.ts. Update the imports for the file to include inject from at angular forward slash core and housing service from dot dot forward slash housing dot service. Then in the body of the home component, add a property called housing service, make that camel case, and set the value to a call to the inject function with housing service as a parameter. Remember that property we had called housing location list? Make sure you've removed all of the contents of the array so that the value of the property is just an empty array. 
create a function called constructor that accepts no parameters. In the body of the function, let's add the logic to populate the housing location list property. This dot housing location list equals this dot housing service dot get all housing locations. And don't forget to add the parentheses at the end because we're invoking the get all housing locations function. Now save all of the code and let's check the browser. If we navigate to localhost port 4200, the application will be functioning just as it was before we refactored the code to use services. This is really excellent work so far, friends. Thumbs up. Now, this is an important change that will actually improve the app's overall quality. Let's continue and get the detail page functioning properly. Before we go on, we should take a quick break to discuss why we're using Inject. Angular uses a concept called dependency injection to allow components and other parts of the code to ask the framework for things that are needed to function, also known as dependencies. At first, this might seem like an extra step, but it gives us some great benefits. First, it allows us to have testable code. When writing unit tests, we can make mocks of things like databases and online resources without having to call them in our test code. Second, we can have more reusable code. We can create our dependencies and use dependency injection to get access in other parts of the application. Third, we benefit from maintainability as well. When our code is loosely coupled, we can change the behind the scenes details and update our code over time without having to impact other parts of the code unnecessarily. All right, friends, back to the code. In details.component.ts, let's import housing service from dot dot forward slash housing dot service. We also need to import housing location from dot dot slash housing location. Next, let's add a reference to the service by adding a property to the component class called housing service, where the value is a call to the inject function with housing service as a parameter. Now, be sure you use your class and not your property as the parameter. Be mindful there. We are also going to do some slight refactoring too. So delete the declaration of housing location ID as a class property. Next, add another class property, and that is housing location of union type housing location or undefined. Then in the body of the constructor, instead of this dot housing location ID, update the code to const housing location ID. We can make this ID a local variable now that we have access to an actual housing location instance. Finally, let's update the code to include the following logic. This dot housing location equals this dot housing location service dot get housing location by ID and as a parameter to this function pass in housing location ID. Wait. We're not done making edits because our code now has an error in the template. To resolve that, replace the interpolated property housing location ID with housing location question mark dot ID. Okay, so what are we doing here? Well, in this case, we have to guard against calling dot ID on undefined. So we use the optional chaining operator from TypeScript. If the housing location is undefined, the ID property won't be accessed and we don't have to worry about an error here. Save this code and let's go back to the browser. Click on learn more for any of the housing locations. When the details page renders, we'll find the ID of the selected housing location being displayed. All right, again, this is really outstanding work, friends. This application is coming along wonderfully, and you should be really proud of yourselves and the work that you've done. Now we've reached the point where we can finally create the details component template. Back in the IDE, in details.component.ts, let's update the component metadata template property. Delete the existing HTML code here and replace it with an article element. Now, Add an image tag as a child element of the article. In this case, give the image element a source attribute of housing location question mark dot photo. Wrap the source attribute in square brackets to enable property binding. 
Because the housing location could be undefined, we'll use the optional chaining operator whenever accessing properties in this particular template. Next, we're gonna add the title and location. We'll start by adding another child to the article element, a section with the class name listing-description. Give the section two children, an H2 element with a class of listing-heading, and then using interpolation, add the housing location name property as a child of the H2. Add another child to the section element, this time a paragraph element. Set the child content to be the following. Interpolate the housing location city property. Then to the right of the interpolated value, add a comma followed by a space, and then interpolate the housing location state property. All right, now that we set up the name, location, and location image, let's add a section for some details. We're going to add another section as a child of the article element. Set the class of the section element to be listing-features. Add an H2 element with the class name section-heading as a child of the list features section. Set the contents of the element to be about this location. Next, we're going to list the features of the location, number of units, and both Wi-Fi and laundry status. So let's add the following code to the listing dash features section. Add a UL as a sibling to that H2 and give the UL three LI children elements. The first child has the text units available colon and then the interpolated value of housing location available units. The second LI has a content, does this location have Wi-Fi colon followed by the interpolated value of housing location Wi-Fi. And the final LI content is, does this location have laundry, colon, followed by the interpolated value of housing location, laundry. Now we're gonna add one more panel that we'll expand on in the next section, but we'll add the placeholder here for now. As a sibling to the listing feature section, let's add a new section with the class listing-apply. This section has two children. The first is an H2 with the class section dash heading with the content apply to live here. And the second element is a button with the class primary and the text apply now. As for the styles, copy the styles from the URL linked in the resources of this video and add them to details.component.css. Now save all of the code and check the browser. Our details page now displays the details of the selected housing location. And you know what's great about this? It works for all the locations because the URLs are dynamic. How cool is that? All right, friends, that's the end of this section. Let's recap what we've covered. We've learned how to create a service, how to inject a service into a component for use, and we've completed our details page. Bravo, very well done. Technically, at this point, you have enough skills to get started building Angular applications. You should be proud of yourselves. I know I'm very proud of you. If you wanna to continue to expand your Angular skills, then join me in the next section where we'll explore even more Angular features and further build out the functionality. All right, friends, catch you in the next one.